we got a new project that we're going to start here in the shop. This one has come up here recently, and I've decided I want to try to tackle it over here and make use of the K&T. Uh, we all like using that, that mill there and seeing it running, so I think this is going to be a pretty good job for that. So this is a, um, a rod in or a rod clevis for a hydraulic cylinder. And uh, this is one that we're doing at work, where I work down there at Motion. And uh, I, just, I just decided to bring it home and, and do a little bit of the milling here on the, on the milling machine. I'm actually going to try to get done whatever I can here in the shop. We've got a lot to do. So here's the sample, okay? And it was damaged pretty bad, uh, whoever removed it. They, they couldn't get the pin out, so somebody took a torch to it to torch the pin, and it just destroyed it. So we're going to build them a new one, okay? So I've got a piece right here. This is two and a half inch uh, A36 hot roll plate that was flame cut, and they did a great job on the flame cut here. This was from Alro Metals out of Orlando, and we always get them to do our, our heavy cutting like this, and they always do a great job. Nice clean edges there with just a little bit. We'll have a little bit of cleanup to do right there with a the grinder before we get started. So we got some milling to do here. You can see we've got to reduce the thickness here. We've got a self-aligning bearing that gets pressed in there. So we'll have to bore a hole. We've got to do some milling there. We've got a little notch to mill out on each side. We've got to bore and thread it. One and seven eighths, 12 is your thread size. We've got a couple bolt holes to drill, and then we've got to split it. So this is screwed onto the rod, and then the two draw bolts just clamp it tight around the thread, and that keeps it from uh, coming off there. So I want to try to get as much of this done as I can, and uh, it is the weekend for me, and I don't have a whole lot of time to work on it. Just had other things coming up that I was having to work on, and it just uh, took away a lot of my time out here in the shop. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on it. I believe we're going to do some laying out. Uh, we're going to put us some lines on there that, that we can follow. Uh, get over here on the mill, and I want to mill the bottom flat, and I believe I want to go ahead and mill the two sides flat. There's not very much to come off, maybe 50 or 60 thousandths to come off, but that will give me some nice square sides to uh, clamp to and indicate on and things like that. And then we'll just go from there, okay? I'll uh, show you the steps that we take along the way, as always. And I've been over here getting the uh, vertical head set up on the K&T. That takes quite a bit of time, so I uh, just try to get some of that done. And I am tramming it in. I just finished tramming it in, and I was just showing you the setup right here. I was just using one of the little, um, actually the one that Mark had repaired for me over at MR Tool Repair, but it's a... Uh, Stare at 196 like this, a back plunge, and just got it uh, clamped in the drill chuck there. And just indicating it, sweeping it in. And I've got it zero, zero, but it's actually zero all the way around, so it's trammed in. Um, as good as I can see with the 1000th resolution on the dial. So I believe that's pretty good. We're going to leave it there. So I'm going to get this dressed up, and then we'll see you on the milling machine, okay? Anytime you're going to work with uh, something that's been flame cut or plasma cut, you always want to try to remove the, the roughness there, the slag. Sometimes whenever it's cut, there's a little thin uh, layer of scale that's still stuck on there that usually can just kind of rub right on off there. And it's best to remove that stuff so that it, it keeps from hurting your tools. So, got a little bit of edge there, so we're just going to clean them up. We've got the Metabo, and I'm just going to dress them all up. after I plug in the extension cord. All right, we made it back over to the mill. So like I said, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the two sides first. It's just gonna be clean up. But as far as the size goes, we're going to try to shoot for, I forgot what it was, 4 and 5 sixteenths, uh, 4.312, if it doesn't hit that, it's not that critical, these are uh, 
all of these dimensions on this is not super critical, except for your bore needs to be right for your press, and of course your threads need to be right so that they fit right. You know, and we need to make sure that we mill enough clearance here. You can see where it, wherever this is hooked up, you know, it's already been rubbing here. But we're going to be uh, we're going to be copying this very close to how you see it like that. So we're going to use our our new uh, six inch face mill there for the two side ops, and then for the uh, end, I'm going to put an end mill there. Ten inches a minute. I believe the sparks and the the uh, the sparkly that you see, and that's that scale that it's milling off the side of it. Yeah, it's dragging back on the on the back end there. So let me make another little fine cut across there just to clean that up smooth. So that was our first cleanup cut right there, and I think it did pretty good. It still got a nice finish and everything. That that facing mill has been used just a little bit and it was just used for some test cuts actually probably a couple months ago maybe and that was this piece right here this big old block of steel that I've had down there and this was a flame cut edge also that I cleaned up and you can see that it did a good job I don't think I ever showed this anywhere I don't I don't remember sharing that so it's just a big old block of steel I've had over there under the table and, uh, Whenever I was doing this, it might have kind of gotten some of those corners of those inserts there and might be why it's not quite as pretty as it should be. But we're going to we're going to let that go because that is pretty nice. All right, so I just got a file. I'm going to do a little bit of um, deburring. It's got a little bit of a, a rolled edge there on the back side. So I'll get that deburred and we'll flip it over and we'll clean up the other side. We got the block flipped over. And we put it, we brought it up another ten thousandths and let's see what she does. What I thought. It's probably gonna take about the same amount. that run and see if it gets close just as clean it up so we're gonna let that one run leave it alone I think I got some bad inserts on there now told you that the dimension isn't super critical there so let me grab a uh, mic all 
right? So I hit it 10 thousandths under my target. Three inches 302 is what I got right there. Uh, that'll work. Okay, guys, I got it flipped around to this other side here, and we're going to use a roughing end mill. That is, uh, I believe that's an inch and a half. about an inch and a half diameter roughing end mill. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mill this to length. We've got approximately eight, it's eight and one sixteenth, I want seven and three quarters. So we got about five sixteenths to mill off of it. So I'm gonna rough most of it off of this one and then I'll put a finishing end mill and make a nice little clean cut across there to make a nice smooth finish. Uh, it doesn't have to be that smooth finish. I'm just doing it because I want to. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on and touch off and uh, we'll make us a couple passes across there. I've got the, I've got the, uh, the Noga cool set up, so we're going to use our mist coolant. I still don't have the flood coolant set up for this mill yet. Tussed off there. I'm gonna set a zero. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna try an eighth of an inch. Let's see what it does. All right, we got our coolant going. start with two inches and I'll I'll adjust it from there. Handle it pretty good, guys. Sorry. Um, this is why I'm going to use a finishing mill because a roughing mill, it'll leave a rough finish on there. Sometimes that's okay, but I just want a nice clean cut across there, just like I did on the faces. So that was an eighth of an inch. And I'm just using the scale here. I'm going to go ahead and take another eighth of an inch cut like that. And then I think I'll uh, switch it out to our finishing end mill.
leaving me about a sixteenth. I'll use some calipers there and, and uh, get a measurement. So let me swap this out. I got a, another email. I'm pretty sure that my friend Colton sent me this end mill. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to swap out to a one inch uh, collet and we'll stick that in there and we'll use that to make our finished cut. All right, so we got our new end mill in there, our one inch four fluter. I want to go ahead and get a little measurement here. And again, this is not uh, precise. It's just got to be close. It, it ain't got to be close, but we're going to shoot for uh, seven and three quarter. Yeah, it looks like my battery's getting low on this thing. It's getting hard to read. So that's saying around 95,000 said I got to come off. So. We'll touch off and take about half that. Let um, me check the speed here. That's pretty good. Zero out and move about. Uh, let's go. Let's just go forty thousandths. All right, forty. feeding. to say that I love the rigidity of this mill. I'm so used to doing these kind of cuts on the uh, the ack return or the small, you know, the, the knee mill. It just doesn't have the same rigidity as this right here. I'm not hearing a bunch of noise and squeaking and beating and banging and rattling. It's just nice and smooth, guys. Let's see about what I need. 45 thousandths. All right, I'm just going to take another 45. That'll put us right there. All right, we're starting our final cut here. So our cut is two and a half inches by 45 inch, uh, 45,000, I'm sorry.
figured I'd give you a shot of the whole thing. Seven seven fifty one right there. Seven fifty two. So we're here at our seven and three quarter length. Got to do some deburring, but I believe what our next step is going to be, we're going to swap this, uh, take this out. We're going to put a roughing shell mill in here, and we'll come in here and, and do our milling here. We're going to mill out this section right here. Alright, the next step that I'm going to take with this eye is I want to go ahead and set this up in the Monarch and get it drilled and threaded. It's going to be for 1 and 7 8 12. This is a little threaded uh, thread gauge that I made a while back that I used for jobs like this. So I'll just use that as a test plug and then I have a really good nut that fits this thread really well and I use that on the rod side also. It's just kind of like my home shop um, go no-go gauges, okay? So I want to get that done before I go any further, like say before boring this hole and milling this because of the way that I want to clamp it. So we're just going to do it over here on the granite plate and just uh, scratch a couple lines on here using this old height gauge. This is an old Starrett. And I've got it set for half the depth. So it's two and a half, which is actually, it's a two inch five ten. So I've got it set uh, for an inch and a quarter plus five thousandths. Okay. Let's see how consistent it looks. All right, not bad at all, right there on it. All right, so we got this side milled so we can do the same thing. Now, I mean, you can do this with just a caliper, or whatever, you know, I just, we're making use of our granite plate here and we're gonna, we're gonna lay it out with our height gauge, so. All right, I said that I was 10 under. Yeah, there we go, 302. Because I was shooting for 312. I'm getting 300 there. We'll, we'll just go 4.3. Alright, so that'd be uh, 2 plus 150. So 2 inches, 150. This is a pretty old style right here. And uh, let's see. Okay, let's try that. pretty good okay so I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take a little fine center punch and go ahead and punch that right there and we're gonna go to Monarch and get this trued up in the forge off <laughs> 